it's done. As with everything I do, this has been a long time coming. The final, and I promise this is the final, instalment of this Comet Coach build. I may return in the future to Comet Coaches and Braskets in general once I've gained a bit more experience and come across some more tips and tricks of the trade. But by the end of this video, my super saloon will be finished and running into Balls Up Station. So, what exactly went wrong last time? In short, I'm rubbish with an airbrush. I try practicing and I have good days and I have bad days. And frankly, it was a bad day. I just could not get the right consistency of thinner to paint. I'd either get it too thin, and five coats later I can still see the primer, or it would just go on too thick and then I'd get frustrated and accidentally put on too much paint on and get runs and I just have to start all over again. This happened on more than one occasion. Uh, and on another occasion, I even changed what paint I was using halfway through, which was fine. And so I went to mask it and then I pulled the masking tape off and all the second coat of paint came off with it. And you can imagine how much I cried. But yeah, as I say, this all happened on more than one occasion and it was just gonna take too long for the previous video. So I put it out unfinished. So now I'm ready to go again. Also to bulk out this video a little bit, I have a few other little jobs to do. There's the couplings to sort out. Uh, there's some curtains to install. And then there's some people to go in it as well. And then there's just like the final little details like the door handles. So without further ado, let's go. I'm starting with the couplings. I have these NEM pockets from MJT. I use some of these on the B-Set upgrade, but this time I'm adding a little step. I want these to have a little bit of spring in them. I have these springs knocking about. I'm not wholly sure what they're from, but I'm pretty sure they were from uh, some old three-link coupling sets. Uh, so it would be perfect, although they potentially may be a little bit soft, but we shall see. Uh, the first step is to get the bogey screw through. And to give it enough room to slide, a quick file sorted that. And then the mounting for the spring. This is just a bit of scrap brass from a fret that was twisted and shaped so to hold the spring in the right place. This was then soldered in place and it worked pretty well, except the spring kept pinging out of place from the tension, even with the chassis in place. So I then made a little cover for the spring out of brass to stop it firing off and also making sure that the brass cover wouldn't impede the travel of the bolt. Next, the actual NEM coupler box was made up and in these I will either have a Roco style coupler or a KD. For now I'm testing with the KD, which hopefully won't backfire on me as most of my fixed rates are uh, Roco couplers. But once made up and tested, I was pretty happy for now that it'll work, so I made a second coupler up and put the chassis back together. Next, I turn to the interior. A very simple task of just fitting seated passengers, which really brought the whole thing to life. I also took the opportunity now to glue the whole interior in place onto the chassis, as I had now finished working on the chassis, so it was all one unit. And now it's time. Time to paint. Oh boy, here we go. I have tested painting with an aerosol can and I'm confident enough this should work. So a spray of GWR Coach Cream, which is from Railmatch, then another spray of that, and then time to cure. And then masking, and then a coat of Rover Russet Brown from Hal Frauds, and then another, and done. Breathe, relax, woosa, or whatever mantra I should be going by. The roof was also sprayed white, with uh, some very quick masking, which left me fraught with concern, but it seemed to have worked. And once all that masking was off, 
I could see that perhaps it wasn't quite as perfect as I had hoped, so I'm touching up some bits by brush. The top bar was fully repainted brown, which is not quite the same shade as the aerosol, but it's far enough away from the rest of the brown for it not to be too noticeable. There were also a couple of bleeds under the masking tape, so I touched those up with Rail Match Cream. So because of all this, I can say I'm not too confident with my masking. So I'm painting the ends by brush as I don't fancy covering all this cream in black spray. The drop lights also received a shade of maroon as well and the AXA boxes received some blue whilst I was in the painting mood. The transfers were next and I was similarly concerned about doing these as lining is not my forte. I did the lining first as that will give me good bearing for the rest to go on. After that I focused on the transfers between the two lines, the numbers at each end and the GWR in the middle. These were about as fiddly as you'd expect. Next were the two crests, one at each end over the first inner wheel of the bogies. I took all my bearings off of various photos that I could find of the real coach just to make sure that they were in the right place. And then these were all given a good coat of varnish to seal it all in. Lastly, the main transfer, the most obvious one. This is from Cambridge Custom Transfers and is unlike the HMRS transfers, a water slide transfer. I've moved away from these over time, as often you can see the sheet that the transfer is printed onto. Or at least every time I've done it, you have been able to. However, these are apparently special ones printed on especially thin paper, so I shouldn't be able to see the paper at all. And because of how thin and subsequently fragile these transfers are, they come with some specific instructions and even some transfers to practice with, which I 100% recommend doing, as these were pretty pricey for the sheet. So you don't really want to be bolting it up. I'm speaking from experience here, as you will see in a moment. Once they were on, I sealed with another coat of varnish, and as you can see, it's not quite perfect. You can see the backing sheet, which is very annoying. I've seen a number of videos with tips and tricks tackling the silvering, but without risking making it worse and never completing this video, I'm going to leave it for now. But hopefully I will be heading back to it in the, in the future. And I have learnt, I've learnt many techniques on how to apply transfers now. I really wish I'd tried that. I'd looked into that before applying these transfers. Hey, uh, live and learn. Anyhow, I know it's an old cliche, but it genuinely isn't quite as bad in real life as the camera is making it out to be. And uh, once all that was done, I moved on to the final step, the glazing and the curtains. The glazing was just some thin, clear plastic glued in place with some glue and glaze. And over the toilet windows, the fogged plastic was used. Uh, the curtains were then glued in place. Again, glue and glaze was used as I didn't want to fog the glazing up. Also, I lied, that was not the last step. The actual last step is the door handles and handrails. All pretty simple stuff, just make sure you clear out the holes with a 0.7mm drill first to make them all easier to go in. And that is done. Now that it's finished, here it is in all its glory, on balls up, running suitably behind a castle, and maybe a king, and maybe a star, who knows, I haven't filmed it yet. Magnificent. It isn't perfect by any means, and I can definitely say I've learned a lot through the many, many problems I've had. But I didn't expect it to be perfect and overall I'm happy with what I've achieved. I know that Comet will be getting some more of my custom as for the most part this was a genuinely very enjoyable project. And I have plenty of other coaches that I would really like on my layout. But anyhow, thank you all for sticking with this project. It has been a touch draw now, I know, but we're there. If you enjoyed this, please do give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can see any future videos I get around to eventually bring out. But for now, enjoy these clips of running it around whilst I contemplate what kit I'm going to be ordering next. Yeah.